Aina, and welcome to Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future, brought to you by the Kiwani Foundation. I'm Ehu K. Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today on the windward side of the island of Oahu. We have an exciting guest on the show, so let's go on over here and meet him. Filippo Souza, did I say your name right? Yeah, you got it. Wonderful. Filippo, tell us where we are today. Well, we're here lo located in an area known as Heia Kea. Yeah. And this is uh, Koholohe Point. Okay, this was an ancient area for burials. Really? Yeah. In ancient Hawaii? In ancient Hawaii. We wanted to have you on the show today because we wanted to talk about you. And, you know, you're Hawaiian, yeah? Yes, I am. All right. I am a Hawaiian, I am a Hawaiian national by birthright. Okay, but wait a minute. Uh, you Hawaiian by blood, huh? No, I'm a no. Hawaiian. I am Hawaiian by my birthright, which was 1936 when I was born here. Okay, so you have no Hawaiian blood. I have no Hawaiian blood. And yet you call yourself Hawaiian. I am Hawaiian under my nationality. Wow, okay, so that means Hawaiian kingdom, huh? Hawaiian kingdom. So Hawaiian actually means, doesn't, uh, doesn't mean by blood, it doesn't mean ethnicity, it's a nationality. Certainly, it's, it's basically, it, it means a lot of things, but it also includes people who were born here by the gift of Kawikioli, Kamehameha III, in his decree in 1839, when he recognized people first. Regardless of ethnicity. Regardless. Yeah. Foreign people, whatever. So you could be Haole, you could be Asian. Right, you didn't have to be born here. Wow. Okay? As long as you were loyal to the kingdom. Now this is Kamehameha III. This is back in the 1830s. Correct. But you were born in the 1930s, a hundred years later. hundred years later. Okay. And so by that time, the Hawaiian Kingdom government had been overthrown. Yes. And the illegal U.S. occupation was already well underway. Certainly. And you come into the world in 1936. Correct. So how did you come to realize that you were and are a Hawaiian national? Well, of course, at that time, I was only interested about what was happening in America. Yeah. as uh, an American citizen. As everybody was back as at that time. As everybody was. Back yeah. at that time, yeah. And I started to see things that were a little different. And I started to ask the question. And while I was dwelling only on being an American national, yeah, I started to find out things about that there were Hawaiian nationals. Okay? And it was based on whether you're born here. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then I started to find out that the overthrow basically in itself was alleged to be, yeah? and certain conditions happened. And those conditions made, made the Hawaiian Kingdom still to be existing today. So in other words, you found out the Hawaiian Kingdom had never gone away. Never gone away. Had now I had to make a decision. Uh -huh. Do I walk with the Hawaiian Kingdom, or do I continue to be in a fraud of the United States? So it was a thing that was on my mind, basically. And I addressed it as saying, I want to be a Hawaiian national. And how old were you when you did that, when you made that decision? That was 19, 1985, I made the decision. Oh, wow, long okay. time. 1985, I filed certain documents mm -hmm. denouncing of my uh, American uh, citizenship and that I was Hawaii as a, as a Hawaiian national. You saw the distinction between the fact that while the Hawaiian Kingdom government had been overthrown in the late 1800s, the Hawaiian nation and its citizenry, the people, still existed, right? Still existed. And I, I, I couldn't, at the beginning part, I couldn't comprehend it as such, you know? Uh -huh. And my whole thing was basically, how can you have two livelihoods, basically? They call it dual citizenship. How can you know? it be two things at the same, same time? time? Yes. Yeah, on it. Yes. And I used to tell Hawaiians, basically, before I knew this about the Hawaiian history itself, the true history, I used to tell Hawaiians, hey, get over it. <laughs> it's spilled milk. It's on, in the past. Get, in the past. Yeah. Get on with your life. Yeah? yeah. And then, of course, I was fortunate that I, not being Hawaiian, but I was raised by Hawaiian families. Mm -hmm. my, I spent about almost 10 of my years, basically with Hawaiian families. Yeah? Wow. And then of course I married into a Hawaiian family itself. Yeah? Yeah. So then I have a different outlook. You got a different perspective. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly. And, and, and the thing about it, uh, I was raised by people that are, that are from the land, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Ho'aina, yeah, the people yeah. who work the lands. The, the, the maka'aina, na, the people yes, of the land. Yeah. yeah. Once you were armed with this information that you were a Hawaiian uh, national, national. Um, obviously, I'm sure it had a pronounced effect on your life, not only in the way you thought, but in the actions you took or didn't take, yeah? Certainly. Tell certainly. us about that. Certainly. Well, in, 19, in 1986, I started this research, basically, and it was started with researching, as I mentioned earlier, about being an American. Yes. And how this tied into where I was now, here in the middle of this Pacific Ocean. And then I found out things about, about Hawaii, the history of Hawaii. And after 10 years of researching and attending meetings, listening to people from different walks of life, yeah, uh -huh. of what happened to them, yeah, I had to make a decision. And that decision was my declaration. Really? In, 18, in, in 1986. That's when you declared yes. Hawaiian National. That's when I declared it. Now I stayed. I stayed back and observed most of the of the existing uh, regulations and and laws, and then I had to make a decision. Uh, I filed, I filed a tax paper, a state tax paper, okay, mm -hmm. uh, for a return, 1999 and the year 2000. Tax return. A tax return. Filippo, you made a declaration, yes, to the state government, state of Hawaii, as well as the U.S. government, that you were no longer, uh, you no longer considered yourself a U.S. citizen, huh? Or a resident of the state of Hawaii. Gotcha. Okay. And therefore, you owed no taxes to them. I did not have an obligation to them. Uh-huh. And, and what, what happened was, they returned my, for the two years on the filing. They sent it back to you. They sent it back to me. <laughs> and the moment I cashed it, then they indicted me. Oh, you got a refund, you mean? I got a refund, yeah. Oh. All I was asking for was my money back. Oh, I got okay? you. My so they sent back. it to you? Well, they sent it to me, okay? <laughs> and they sent it, of course, and later it became an indictment, yeah? Because you cashed the check and kept the money. Yeah, and the thing okay. about it is I gave them the blueprint and everything that they used against me. Right. 80% of all the documentation I created. Okay. Okay. All right, so you told them exactly what to do. Yeah, it was a done deal insofar right. as subject matter is concerned. Okay, yeah? but when you, I just got to stop and ask you, when you sent that in, and what did you know that you were finally, you were going to get indicted? Was that your plan? Well, I don't want to say it was a plan. I knew that, that I was stepping into, I was, every, <laughs> prior to that, I was only playing around with the dragon's tail. Right, yeah? Yeah. But when you start doing that, you start to get to the throat. Yeah. Of so the you drag. knew it was a risk. It was a risk. I knew that. Okay. Fully. Okay. okay. And then I had because I had to make that decision before I filed. Yeah. Yeah. What was going to come down on? Yeah. It, yeah. How far you're willing to and, go? And how far I was willing to go. So I had a trial. Wow. Okay. I had a trial, and I went into their jurisdiction basically, and I told them that uh, uh, that I. Of course, they wanted me to get a lawyer, and I told them I'm not using a lawyer because a lawyer is part of your jurisdiction and is an officer of your court. Uh-huh. I will be defending myself. Then they tried to side me with an assistant counsel that sat in the back of me. Uh-huh. I had him removed. Uh-huh. Okay. And I said, if you're going to be in here, I can't control if you're going to be in this courtroom, but you don't sit next to me. I don't want nobody thinking that you are doing something for me. Because mm -hmm. you know when you go into court, the prosecution is on the left, yeah, and the defense is on the right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he was trying to stay by me. I told him, "You go on that side uh -huh. and sit." Anyway, I was able to get through through the court okay, on it, but because of my, uh, uh, I did things that uh, I, uh, I I I refused to stand. I refused to take certain orders. They found me in contempt, and they uh, they arrested me and threw me in jail. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. They threw you in jail, not for. I wasn't. I wasn't convicted yet. Okay, but they threw you in jail only for contempt of court. Contempt of court. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. And how long? Eight, were... Eighty-two days. Okay. I was. I was incarcerated. So they stopped the trial. Case. No. 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 Oh, no. They continued the trial. They came pick me up every every time. Oh no, kidding. Court date. Okay. Yeah, on it. So all my research and everything was based on was based on what I had up here. Uh huh. You know. And then I had a couple of people who were basically coming and visit me, giving me updates of what was going on and everything. And I, 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 I appeared before court. I defended myself. All right. And my stand was, you don't have jurisdiction. I got convicted in the latter part of September. 
and uh, and I was sentenced in in December. Uh, I was sentenced December 31st. Of what year? Of 2004. Okay. Okay. And for how long? One year. One year. Yeah, I was facing I was facing 16 years. Mm -hmm. I had I had four charges against me, theft, yeah, and fraud, uh -huh. yeah, and basically. Uh, it was, it was, I was sentenced to one year. And so what charge did they convict you on, Filippo? Uh, fraud uh -huh. and theft. Okay. Okay, fraud and theft. All right. Now, uh, of course, I filed, I filed an appeal. Yes. Uh, again, based on not having jurisdiction. Yes. Okay. Uh, I won my appeal, and I was supposed to be remanded, yeah, and, and try it again. What happened was 29 months went by, <laughs> okay? That's a under, little... Under their law, they have six months to bring you back in, uh -huh. okay? And I didn't win because what I presented, I was smart. I won only because of jurisdiction. I they see. didn't want to go that route again. Yeah, yeah? they dare not do that. Yeah, they didn't want to go the route. I was yeah. a little different kind of person, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and not because I, I had done the research. That's all I stood on. Mm-hmm. I didn't come in and quote court cases and, you know, so-and-so votes versus so-and-so and all. Right. I just said who I am. Right. That's all I said. It was who I am. Right. And You, uh, you essentially were talking about your identity and that was it, right? That was it. Wow. That was it. And 29 months passed by, okay? Then I get a call to go to the chambers of Judge Pollock, who I believe now is on the Supreme Court of Hawaii, okay? And I go there and he was... He was there basically by himself, okay? And I went in with my, with Dan, who did the, uh, the appeals for me. Uh -huh. Walter Shutley did the appeals for me. We sat in there basically. And what, what my question was, why am I here? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, your rules and regulations say you have defaulted. And he said, what are you talking about? He thought I didn't go to prison. <laughs> he said, you went to prison or anything? I said, yeah, I was in prison while I was in court. And he said, wow. Then he said, I got to call the prosecutor. So he calls the prosecutor. And my word, my word was then, how come the prosecutor is not here? And her reply was, oh, I'm too busy. And I said, excuse me, Your Honor, excuse me, I'm leaving. She's too busy. 29 months has expired. You guys have defaulted. This is over. This is over. And my Shotley said, no, I think we should. No, that's what I said. And he said, well, what about you paying back the, the state? I said, no, take me to court. And I left. You walked out the door? I walked out the door. Never been back. Wow. Never been back. So they convicted you. Yeah. They sentenced you to 12 months in prison. Yes. But because you appealed, which was supposed to be come up to the courts in six months, you actually spent 29 months in prison. Oh, yes. Almost three years. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Wow. But they were nice enough to send me, uh, that I was, what do you go, I served my time. Yeah. And I, I was no longer a troublemaker. Oh, they and gave you a certificate or a something? Certificate, yeah. <laughs> graduate, you're a graduate. Okay? And all I have to do is go there to them, okay? And get, uh, what do they call that now? When they relieve you of your abated whatever oh you mean your, re your record expunged or yeah, something yeah expunged yeah yeah you're no longer a troublemaker yeah. you're a good boy not yeah. a bad boy and I told him I ain't coming <laughs> I wanted to be there <laughs> right I want people to find out because when they right. expunge everything the next guy that comes he's going to be able to there's no it. more record no, of no it record. no precedent yeah, no yeah. Precedent, wow Wow. They, so I, I learned a few things there basically they know? knew exactly what they were doing Certainly. in terms of dodging Certainly. This dangerous subject. Certainly. Wow. And it's all jurisdiction. It's all jurisdiction. So I went back home to resume my normal life and, uh, and attending meetings with different organizations. One other thing that has been a plus for me, because I'm not of the blood of the cocoa, uh -huh. I'm not involved. I don't have any land claims. Uh -huh. You see, I have no titles, you know, alihi and everything. So the people that do, they get sidetracked into going into courts and whatever and making claims and arguing back and forth. Okay? About who owns the land. Who owns the land. Yeah. And the whole thing is to keep you in subject matter. 
Keep you tied up in tied that. Tied up in subject matter, not gotcha. jurisdiction. Gotcha. You see? Gotcha. And I found that because of that, it simplified my situation. I was blessed by not having Hawaiian blood, not being a lihi line, and not having any claims to land. Uh-huh. See? It was pure and simple. Pure and simple. That's wow. all I stood on. Wow. Yeah, jurisdiction. Wow. Until this very day, I can't say that you're not going to do anything about it, but so far, so good. Yeah, but you're still a troublemaker. I still am doing, I'm not a troublemaker. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a truth seeker. I know, I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're a truth seeker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the thing about it is that, you know, in life, right, we know, right? what is the first thing we learn, yeah, as children, yeah? To tell the truth. Yeah. Before we go to school. Yeah. 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 Before we become part of the community, we learn it from home. Yeah. On it. And if you didn't learn it from home, then you become a troublemaker <laughs> in school. Right? Right. Right. <laughs> then you become that trouble. Right. But you leave because of blessing of your family. Yeah. Some degree of truth. You don't know everything. Yeah. Yeah. But you know how to honor people. Yeah. Respect property. Yeah. Uh -huh. The simple things, yeah? Yeah. On it. And basically now when you become an adult and then you start finding out things about what took place and you say, wait a minute, the truth is this is what is today. It never went away. It never went away. The Hawaiian kingdom. The Hawaiian kingdom. When you look into the truth of the matter, yeah? Mm -hmm. When you when you you follow the history of Kawiki Oli, Kamehameha the, the third, yeah. And what he prescribed, what he set aside, yeah? Knowing of all the threats that was around him since he was a child. When 11 years old, he became the Ali, the Moe. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But he had Kaahumanu around him, and he had times to look at things as a child. He had smart advisors. Smart advisors. What Kamehameha III did, Kawiki Oli did, it's not just land. Yeah? It is a sense of belonging. Mm. Yeah? And you look at civilizations, common people had a revolt of some way to get any kind of recognition or some kind of freedom. He gave it to the people. He shared it with the people. Mm -hmm. And it isn't so much of the land and the aina. It is the freedom of you being an independent sovereign under his rule. On that land? On that land. Wow. Yeah. Fortunately, there, there is land to it also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is another issue mm -hmm. so far as the lands are concerned. And that's where the people get all jammed up because they end up going into the court system and they end up talking about jurisdiction or subject matter, yeah? Mm -hmm. Subject matter, subject matter. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of people that on record okay, that were at fault. They sold the land. The people of today, of course, you know, they're they finding out they have ancestors that are sold out on them, yeah? Mm -hmm. And, and because, because they thought everything was all right. You know? And then they end up are arguing themselves and end up back into these court systems that discuss, okay, not only because they're recognizing jurisdiction because they want to have a remedy. So they go to the courts for the remedy, okay? Because there is no established Hawaiian Kingdom court, yeah? So they're not only in the wrong court, they're fighting each other. They're fighting each other in, in the jurisdiction that wants to keep them there, yeah? Yes. So, Filippo, what about the future? We've talked about the past. What about the future? Where do you see, I mean, how the Hawaiian king, the, the nation of Hawaii, Kingdom of Hawaii, still exists. Yes. What about the future? Are you hopeful? I am hopeful, but unfortunately, we may not have all of the people that could be part of it. One of the things, of course, is I may about two major bills or enactments: Act 55, uh -huh. Public Development, Public Land Development Corporation (PLDC). PLDC. Uh huh. Okay. Now, PLDC, basically, if everybody recalls Abercrombie, in his campaign, he said, I know where the money is. <laughs> okay, and everybody, mostly everybody, thought, well, you know, he spent 20 years in Congress. He knows what he's talking about. It is it, there's no money in Congress. Money is in our pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He came back here for the land. Mm -hmm. Public Land Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. Asian plenty money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hawaii, plenty land they control. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then to piggyback, piggyback that, Act One Ninety Five, Kanai Ulu Valo. Yeah, 
to make the Hawaiians stand in line again. The native Hawaiian roll. The native Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah. here we go, all over okay. again. Yep. The native yep. Hawaiian, okay? Yep. On it. Yep. And now, you know, there was no such thing as native Hawaiians. Right. Okay, that was created by the federal government. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were Hawaiian. Yeah. Okay. Well, you were better yet, you were Kanaka Maoli. Yeah. 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 no native. Filippo, how can we overcome all of these roadblocks that they seem to continually put in our way? How can we do that? Well, of, of course, basically, is to keep yourself educated on what's going on. Yeah. Uh, to stand fast when the car here, when the call is put out, put out to the uh -huh. people. Yeah. Don't stay at home. Yeah, don't stay at home. Answer the call. Answer the call. When they have a call for the issue of Hawaiian sovereignty, mm -hmm. you got to come out. Okay. My own family tell me, you're wasting your time. Let it go. You know, you're going to get nothing. Now, I got something. I went to jail one year. Yeah? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I tell them, I said, well, if I get in, how come they send me to jail there? <laughs> Why? When you protest, yeah, right now in this country, yeah, mm -hmm. It is not against the law to protest. Yeah. It's against the law to occupy when wrongfully and whatever you, but to stand there and say, I'm against it. Nothing wrong with that at all. And that was the Kuei petition of 1897. Mm -hmm. yeah. When 94% of the population said no annexation. No annexation to the U.S. To we the don't US. want to become part of the U.S. Yes. Yes. And you know what? You are the living example of that today. I'm glad to be. I'm glad to be. <laughs> Great. And you know what? We're glad to have you on the show. we got to leave it there. Fine with me, brother. Filippo, thank you for being on Voices of Truth. You're, you're an outstanding example for well, others to follow. Well, just an example. They'll be fine with me. <laughs> Thank you, brother. God bless. Good mahalo to, have you. to you too, and mahalo to our viewers for being with us in Pulipo Souza, Hawaii National, here on Voices of Truth. Remember, you can watch us on the web 24 7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com. I'm Ehuke Kahu Cardwell with the Kawani Foundation, and until next time, ahui ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also, view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.